As resellers, we all know that time is money. The more time you're able to save, the more money you're able to make, which is why I wanted to make this video about my Amazon listing process. I don't talk a ton about that process because frankly, it's kind of boring. It's not nearly as fun or interesting as the process of sourcing the treasure hunt, getting out there and finding something cool, but this is going to bring so much value to my fellow Amazon sellers that I wanted to make this video anyway. When I first started selling on Amazon, I couldn't believe how unintuitive Amazon's process of listing items on their platform is. I mean, they're so good at enhancing the user experience for buyers. I really couldn't believe how difficult it was. But over the last couple of years, I've figured out how to streamline my listing as much as possible, and it's made the whole process much less of a chore. The software that I use to accomplish this is called Acceler List. I've been using it for the last couple of years, and I really like it. So I'm gonna be giving you guys a quick and dirty tutorial of how to get the most out of that software and how to build efficiency as fast as possible in your Amazon listing process so that you can spend more time doing the things you actually like. Now, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is organize the inventory that you want to list. I have a desk next to me here where I keep everything that I'm wanting to list. I normally will wait until I have a decent sized batch before I take the time of listing it all. For me, that's like at least 50 plus items, normally north of 100. But for you, you can scale that to the size of your business. Fewer batches overall equals fewer times sitting down and going through this process and fewer trips to UPS, etc. So I like to wait until I have a decent sized batch. And at first glance, this probably seems pretty disorganized and cluttered, but in reality, you can see that I have all of this inventory organized according to type, title, and condition. So over here, I have this stack of law school textbooks. Then over here, we have a few different stacks of games from acceptable, then very good condition games, and then a few brand new sealed titles down here. I also have a couple systems down here that there just wasn't really any better place for. And then you can see specifically on the games that they're actually organized according to which game they are because I do have multiples of the same title. We've got a bunch of Lego Ninjagos here, a bunch of North Guards here, and you guys will quickly see how having all of this stuff organized ahead of time will end up making us much more efficient throughout the listing process. But let's jump into Acceler List now and I'm going to take you guys start to finish on actually creating a batch and sending it to Amazon. By the way, there are pretty much three big tools that I use throughout this process to make it more efficient. The first one is my wireless barcode scanner here. The brand is Natamu. Uh, this just saves a ton of time in not having to actually manually type listings in. Uh, then we have my Dymo label printer that I use for uh, the FBA labels that I actually stick on the individual games and books and stuff. And then the other Dymo label printer that is used for the shipping labels. If you don't have those exact brands, it's no big deal. You can hook all different kinds up to the listing software. Uh, but if you don't have those, I'll try to make sure that I have links down below in the description. Also speaking of links, Travis, the founder of Acceler List, was kind enough to hook me up with a referral link for Acceler List that not only gets you the regular two weeks free trial of the product, but also $10 off your first month. Uh, so if this is something that you don't have already and are looking to try out, uh, definitely feel free to use that. It also helps out the channel, so I definitely appreciate it. But yeah, let's hop into the software now and see exactly what it looks like. Okay, so this here is Accelerlist's homepage. Once you have an account on your dashboard, you have some uh, useful little metrics here that you can look at that can be helpful for you know analyzing your business in various ways. We're not gonna get into that today. What we are going to get into is uh, creating a batch and how you actually send stuff in. So this is what comes up when you click create a new batch. Um, I do have a custom SKU template. That basically means that um, I have a customized series of numbers that will come up uh, as like the number label for each one of these products. In your settings, you can enter your home or business shipping address, uh, the fulfillment channel, FBA or fulfilled by merchant. And then finally the labeling preference. You do have an option of 
not labeling your products like I do. I think it's kind of an unnecessary expense not to do it because it is so easy with the Dymo printer. Um, and then the workflow I always have as private. So let's go ahead and create a batch. Then this is the screen that you're going to see. The first thing that you want to do is modify your batch settings up here. If you have a uniform buy cost, you can uh, modify it up here. I just have the default to $1 because I pay different amounts for everything. The supplier, you can set different supplier codes. Um, I usually use a TS. It stands for thrift store, but it's just kind of a catch all for me. Um, but if you want to designate different settings for different suppliers in for example your repricer that can be helpful if you're hiring someone to buy your inventory for you you can designate uh, what scout you might be using uh, quantity default for me is usually going to be one uh, and then the date purchased can also be helpful especially if that comes up in your uh, custom SKU for your products then you can come over here to your default notes, pick a default condition. In this batch, I think the most common item is going to be very good, so we'll just select that. The category, usually more often than not, is going to be video games for me. Uh, and then you can choose your note subcategory. So for example, I'm listing almost all games today, uh, and it will come up with these three preset condition notes that I have typed out ahead of time. I'm gonna throw very good in there because that's going to be the most common. And then you can see it just populates automatically with, comes with original case and manual if applicable, case may have some stickers and wear no access code or supplements included, which is my default setting for the condition of very good condition games that will be my description that people can see on Amazon. Now, don't miss this bit here, folks, because this is incredibly important. Being able to have preset condition notes is an absolute game changer. I cannot imagine for this entire stack of inventory having to write down an individual description for the condition of each one, or even, you know, even if it's the same thing every time or copy and paste every time, having that pre-written out and just one click away is super helpful and increases efficiency dramatically. And the way that you actually set those condition notes in the first place is you'll come over here to this window, hop over to condition notes, and you can see I have all of my presets here. I have everything from like consoles to games to handhelds to books, basically anything that I list consistently. For example, uh, right here, you can see this is the Wii with Wii Sports bundle. I sell a ton of Wiis with Wii Sports, so knowing that uh, anytime I have one, I don't have to write out all the things that it includes every time. For example, AV cords, adapter, sensor bar, white Wii remote controller, nunchuck and Wii Sports game, all I have to do is just click, super nice. So anyway, you can modify and set new ones of those from this condition note screen right here. Uh, but we're gonna go back into our original batch that we set. So I'm gonna pull this back up here. And now that we have all of our defaults in place, what you can do is come up to this little box and then use your handy dandy barcode scanner that we sent said before. And you can scan your Hello Kitty Switch game into the system here. You can see I have listed it before. We're just gonna click list new. Uh, and here is where I can come and enter my buy cost, which was I believe $15. And you can see all of the competitive listings right here. Let's actually close these and make this screen a little bit less cluttered so that you can see what we're actually doing. So these right here are all of the FBA listings. Just as a rule of thumb, I always price my games competitively, both with condition, similar condition, and similar fulfillment method. So what I look at here, because I'm sending these all into FBA, is the other FBA listings. And I can see right here, there is another one at $28 in very good condition. But this little icon here, this Amazon icon, tells me that this is actually the buy box price. So that right now matters more than the lowest very good price. This is probably like a new seller or something like that that I don't really have to worry about. So you'll notice what it automatically populates with is the matching buy box price, which is what I want. And it tells me immediately the FBA profit that I am expected to make on this item is just over uh, $5, which is not great on a $15 investment. By the way, the price has gone down on that a little bit. But then we can actually scroll down here 
to the condition notes if I want to change it at all from the default settings, which is the very good game. I can come down here and this is where I was saying it's just one click away. If I decide no, this game is actually in good condition, I can change the condition here and then come down to my games category that I have set up ahead of time and just click good and boom, it's already done. I don't have to write anything. I can just scroll down here. Then the last thing that I'll change is the quantity. I do have two of these games, so I don't have to list this one separately. Click two and boom, add it to batch. Then my Dymo label printer just printed off a couple stickers here, which I will stick over the barcodes of these games like so. And these two games are good to go. And now you can see that it will automatically take you back to the batch dashboard. Let's go ahead and do one more game uh, at full speed or just about full speed this time to show you guys a little bit better glimpse of how the process will actually go. So we will scan this lovely copy of Truber Brook for the Switch. Oh, well, okay, that was a good moment there. You want to make sure that uh, your cursor is actually in that box there. We'll use our scanner, scan that in, and you can see it comes up automatically. I've listed some before. We will list with a new one. Okay, and we can see the lowest very good copy and also the one that happens to be in the buy box is at $28.45. My buy cost on these was 10 a piece. Profit will be $9. Scroll down here. It is in very good condition. And I have two of them, so we'll change the quantity and go ahead and add to batch. Then it'll bring us right back to the dashboard. Print off the labels immediately and we are good to label these suckers and send them off. So as you guys can see, I just listed two games in, what was that, like 15 seconds. This process can get incredibly efficient if you have uh, your presets and your condition notes and stuff inputted ahead of time. The other thing that's really nice about this software is that uh, it shows you the net profit and your total buy cost as you're going along. Sort of gives you an idea of uh, how well these items are expected to perform. Granted, you can't always count on that because there's you know repricing and market factors that will go into what they actually end up selling for. Now, obviously, you guys don't want to sit here and watch me do this entire batch. That would be incredibly boring. But what I want to take you to now is the process of uh, actually exporting this stuff to Amazon. So what you will do once you're finished with a batch, let's say that we're doing an incredibly small batch here of just two items, is you'll go to preview shipment plans. And this is a really useful feature that will allow you to see how they are wanting to designate uh, these items into shipments. So right now, it looks like they're wanting to send these four games in two different shipments with two units each to a couple of different warehouses. These are the codes for the warehouses there. Uh, if you're wanting to know which ones are in which, you can go ahead and view the item with that. Uh, and then you'll just go down here and click create shipment plans and create batch. That is what will send the information over to Amazon and you'll be able to go there and uh, go through your shipment creations there. The other option here is you can reject the shipment plan and add more items. This can be useful if, for example, they're trying to send this uh, the items that you have to more warehouses than you'd really like split the shipment up into too many different bits. Uh, what you can do is reject the shipment plan and add more items and try just like maybe waiting a little bit and throwing some other items maybe that you have to send in after you source them into the batch and see if that maybe more favorably uh, ends up allocating them to smaller a smaller number of warehouses. But yeah, folks, once you click this uh, create shipments and complete batch button, that's pretty much the end of the listing process. In the future, I may end up doing another video on how to uh, like actually ship your batches to Amazon through the uh, Seller Central portal. If you guys would like to see that, definitely let me know. But in this video, I just wanted to give you guys a quick tutorial on exactly what is possible when you maximize the efficiency of your Amazon listing. This process could be incredibly tedious and take a super long time, but if you have the right tools in place, it can be a lot more painless. If you guys like videos like this, if you find it helpful, definitely hit the like and subscribe button. That helps me out a lot. Normally these videos do not do very well in terms of YouTube performance, but I feel like they are pretty valuable to a certain set of people. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you need any of the stuff that I mentioned in this video or the software itself, like I mentioned, the links will be down below. And until next time, I will catch you guys on the flip.